Welcome to iLecture Online and here is a combination lens problem where we are given an object, two lenses, in this case they are two converging lenses, one that has a focal length of 30 centimeters, the other one that has a focal length of 20 centimeters, and we're supposed to find the final image cast by this object uh, due to the two lenses being there. Now, the way you typically want to do that is as follows. First, draw the ray diagram for the image formed by the first for, for, from the object here using only the first lens and ignoring the presence of the second lens as if it's not there at all. All right, if we do that, it's just like before. We draw our first ray from the top of the object to the first lens. And at that point, the uh, ray is going to be diverged. It's going to be changed in direction to hit the focal point right here of the first lens. This is the focal point of the first lens. So the ray will diverge go through the focal point, continue on like that. Now we draw the second ray, and let me just put the number one here, so that's the first ray. Now we draw the second ray. This ray will go through the focal point here in front of the lens, continue on until we hit the lens, and at that point it will diverge and continue on parallel to the normal until it hits, oh, no, that's not very straight here, until it hits the, um, the other ray right there. And where those two meet, that will be the location of the first image. So this will be what we call image one caused by the first lens. Now, what do you think the second lens will do to these rays? Again, we know that this is a converging lens, so that will cause the second ray to bend. And not knowing exactly what's going to happen to the second ray, but definitely this, this, uh, uh, the ray will bend some more due to the second lens right here like this. This ray will bend a little bit more due to the second lens like that. And so the expectation is that instead of the image forming there, the image will form over here somewhere. Of course, not sure exactly where. We'll figure that out in just a moment. Now to find out where the exact location is for image one and the location for image two, and this may not be correct by the way, image two, something else may happen. We'll see in just a moment what. Uh, let's go ahead and start using the equations to find out the exact position and magnification orientation of our first image. So just like before, we say S prime, but in this case, since it's the uh, image for the first lens that we're trying to find, we're going to call this S1 prime to indicate this is the image of the first lens, equals S prime F prime over S or I shouldn't say prime, but S1, F1 divided by S1 minus F1. So we use the exact same equation as before. We just put the sub 1 subscript because this is the portion of lens 1 first. So plug in the numbers, we get S is uh, 50 centimeters. And I don't want to put down centimeters. That gets a little bit decluttered. I'll just leave them, just put the numbers down. Uh, F1 would be 30 divided by 50 minus 30. So this is equal to 1500 divided by 20. So this is equal to, uh, let's look, uh, let's do 75 centimeters. So that means, hmm, that makes somewhat sense. All right. So that means that the first image will be formed at a distance 75 centimeters away from the first lens. So this distance right here represents S1 prime, which is equal to 75 centimeters. Now the fact that this is a positive 75 centimeters means that it's a real image forming to the right of the lens and so we can say that image one is equal to, is real. The magnification of image one, I'm going to call that m sub one, is equal to minus s1 prime over s1 which is equal to a minus 75 divided by a positive 50 which is equal to minus 1.5. Okay, that means that the size of the image is one and a half times the size of the object. It looks about right in our diagram. And also the negative means that it's inverted. So it's upside down or inverted. The image is inverted. Okay, now we're ready to try and find the second image. How do we find the second image? Well, what, turns, what it turns out to be then is that image one becomes object of the second lens. So the image of the first lens acts now as if it's the object of the second lens, which means this distance right here is now the object distance of the second lens. Now, this distance right here would be the 75 centimeters minus the 10 centimeters, which is the distance between the two lenses. So this here is 
a distance of 65 centimeters. Now, the object distance is not 65 centimeters, it's actually a minus 65 centimeters because it is behind the lens. The object is to the right of the lens instead of to the left of the lens. So therefore, we can say that S2 is equal to a minus 65 centimeters. Again, it's the 75 centimeters behind the first lens, which means it's 65 centimeters behind the second lens. And since it's beside, behind the second lens, we're going to call that a negative object distance, S2. Now we go ahead and use the very same equation out for the second lens. So now we have S2 prime, because now we want to find the distance to the second image. That's equal to S2 minus F2 divided by S2, mm, not minus. We want to multiply the numerator and minus the denominator. There we go. That's better. Plugging in the numbers. So this is equal to S2 is a minus 65 times F2. That's uh, 20 centimeters divided by S2, which is minus 65, minus 20 centimeters. So this is equal to, that looks like a minus 1300 divided by minus 65, minus 20, which is minus 85. And with a calculator, we can figure out what that is equal to. So we have uh, 1300 divided by 85, and we get... 15.3 centimeters, a positive 15.3 centimeters. All right, what does that mean? That means since it's a positive, it's to the right of the second lens. Since it's positive, it means it is a real image and it's 15.3 centimeters behind the second lens. So this distance right here is 15.3 centimeters behind the second lens. All right, that's the location, the fact that it's upright. We can then say that image two, or I shouldn't say upright, but since it's positive, image two is a real image, not a virtual image. It really forms there. Find the magnification of that image. We're going to say M2 is equal to minus S2 prime over S2. Now, this is the magnification of the image two relative to object two, which was image one. So the, this will simply give us the magnification of the second image relative to the first image. All right, so this is equal to minus S2 prime, which was 15.3 mm, centimeters. So that's a minus 15.3 centimeters, minus 15.3, divided by S2. And S2 was, let's see here, here it is, a minus 65. So it looks like we're going to have a positive number there. Let's take that, 15 divided by 65, and it is equal to 0 0.235, 0 0.235. Now, it's a positive magnification, which means it is in the same orientation as the object from which it came. Since the object, 2, is already upside down, and we have this as a positive number, that means the image will also be upside down. It'll be in the same direction as the object that formed it. Now remember, object two was really the image of lens one. The magnification of that is 0.235, which means that the size of this image is 23.5% the size of that image. It didn't quite come out here. Of course, I was kind of guessing what the direction of those rays would be after they went through the second lens. Not quite right. But now the total magnification of the second image relative to the first object would be found by, so we could say m total, the magnification total, is simply the product of m1 times m2. So m1 had a magnification of minus 1.5. Magnification 2 was a positive 0 0.235. And so now we have the magnification of the second image relative to the initial object by multiplying those two together. Let's do that, times 1.5 equals, and so we have a minus 0 0.35, and that is the magnification of the second image relative to the original object. The fact that it's minus means that it's inverted relative to the original object, so we can say that the final image is inverted relative to the original object, and that's how you do a double lens problem. Again, a real quick review. You find the first image by totally ignoring the second lens, just act as if there's only one lens. You go through the equations, you find the image distance, image one, 
you find that it's real because it has a positive image distance. You find the magnification, which was in this case a little bit larger <coughs> excuse me, than the original object. And you also knew that since the magnification was negative, the first image was inverted. Then you call the first image the object of the second lens, so call it object 2. You find the distance by taking the total distance from the object to the first lens and subtract the distance from the first lens to the second lens, which was 65 centimeters. Since the object is behind the second lens, we call that a negative object distance. Then you use that with the same equation, but now with subscript 2, because now we act as if there's only a second lens and not a first lens. You plug in the numbers, you now get a new image distance, but this is the image distance relative to the second lens. So we now know that the second image forms 15.3 centimeters behind the second lens, behind because it's a positive value. Therefore, we also know that the second image is real. Then we go ahead and find the magnification, just like we do always, taking the negative image distance divided by the object distance. We get a positive value, which means the orientation of the second image is the same orientation as the object that caused it, which in effect was the first image. Then, of course, to find the total magnification, you multiply the two magnifications of each lens together. Then you realize that this is a negative value, which means the orientation of the second image is different or upside down relative to the orientation of the object and the total magnification is simply the product of the two. So it's about one third the size of the original object. Not that it came quite out on this, on this image, but again remember that it's very difficult to figure out the direction of the, of the rays after they pass through the second lens. We can only kind of take a guess, but uh, if we work out the equations you actually get the real values of what those numbers are. And that's how you do that.